The year was 1350. Winter had swallowed Europe whole. Snow pressed down on the thatched roofs, heavy, silent, endless. The wind screamed through every crack of wood and mud. And inside, there was no fireplace, no glow, no flame. Breath turned to smoke in the air. Thick wool cloaks barely kept the cold from biting through skin. The walls groaned. The night never ended. Yet somehow, they lived. Night after night, without fire, without heat, without mercy. No chimney, no dry wood, only the will to survive. So how did they do it? How did medieval peasants survive frozen nights when the world outside froze to minus 30? And even the stars looked cold because what kept them alive wasn't fire. It was knowledge, ancient and warm. They didn't build tall houses. They built low ones, half buried in the ground. From a distance, they looked like mounds of earth. Small, humble, almost invisible under the snow. But step closer, and you'd find life breathing beneath the soil. A single door, a straw roof, mud walls pressed by frozen wind. No stone, no timber, just earth. The earth was their blanket, their shield their quiet companion through the longest nights. When the cold came howling from the north, when trees stood bare and frozen, they dug deeper. They learned that warmth doesn't rise sometimes, it hides below. So they carved homes into the land, leaving only the roof above ground. The walls of dirt wrapped around them like a mother's arms, holding protecting, remembering the day's heat. Inside it was dim and silent. The floor smelled of clay their breath mixed with the scent of animals sleeping nearby. No fire burned, but the air was thick with warmth. Outside, the wind screamed. Inside, only heartbeats, only breath, only life. Tests from old ruins show the truth that those half-buried huts stayed up to 15 degrees warmer than the night outside. 15 degrees. That difference meant life or death. It wasn't comfort. It was survival earned by instinct, not invention. And it worked. Sometimes it's not height that keeps you warm. It's depth. The courage to go down when everything freezes above. Today, architects call it earth sheltering. People build energy efficient homes out of soil and steel, praising the design as modern genius. But the peasants, they knew it first. They didn't need science. They had the ground and the ground remembered primitive number brilliant the house was small too small for a family and yet not everyone inside walked on two legs in the corner a cow shifted in its sleep a sheep exhaled its breath turning to mist and beside them a man a woman and a child wrapped in rags breathing the same heavy air they didn't sleep with animals because they wanted to they slept with them because they had to out there, the cold could peel the skin off your fingers. Inside, the heat from a single body mattered. A cow could give off nearly a thousand watts of warmth. A living heater, silent and patient, when the night dropped to 20 below. That warmth meant survival. So they built straw walls to separate man from beast, thin, soft, and glowing with trapped heat. The straw drank the warmth the animals breathed it out, and the people breathed it in. No fire, no smoke, just breath. You can almost feel it, the air thick with life, the smell of hay and damp wool, the faint sound of steady heartbeats echoing in the dark. Outside, the wind screamed. Inside, they survived, because warmth is warmth, no matter where it comes from. They weren't disgusted, they weren't proud, they were alive, and that was enough. Today, we build Earthship's homes that trap sunlight recycle heat and praise the idea of natural warmth. But the peasants, they lived that truth long before blueprints and science. Their heaters had names. Their insulation had breath. Their warmth was alive. They didn't fear the smell. They feared the cold. And somehow they beat it. Primitive, number brilliant. Their beds were not made of wood, not feathers, not wool. Just straw, golden dry, whispering softly in the dark. In a world without comfort, they found warmth where others saw waste. The floor of a peasant's home was cold as stone. 
colder still when frost crept through the earth. Lying on it meant surrender the cold would pull the heat straight from your bones. So they built a layer 20, maybe 30 centimeters deep of straw. They laid linen or rough wool above it. A simple trick, but powerful. The air trapped between each stalk became a shield, a blanket of invisible warmth. When you lay on it, you could feel the crunch beneath your back, the smell of harvest, the faint whisper of the fields that fed you, now keeping you alive. Outside, ice grew on windows. Inside, the body stayed warm. Through the night, through the freeze, through the silence, no electricity, no heater, just air, held by straw. That thin barrier raised the difference between life and frostbite. Tests today show the same thing air insulation works better than most solid walls. But they didn't need science. They only needed to feel. To them, straw wasn't trash. It was wisdom golden and humble. It was warmth hidden in plain sight. Today, survivalists fill their sleeping bags with down and synthetic fibers. But the idea, it's ancient. It came from hands that worked the soil and slept on it too. Because warmth isn't about wealth. It's about knowing what keeps the body alive and the peasants they knew. Simple, yes, but brilliant. Wool, to most, it's just cloth. But to the north, it was armor. In the frozen lands where firewood was scarce and wind bit through bone, warmth had to be worn, not burned. The Vikings knew this well. They didn't chase the flame, they wove it. Layer upon layer, they built what they called the wool cocoon. Rough fibers inside to trap the body's breath. Soft, brushed wool outside to block the wind. Two layers, one purpose survival. It wasn't luxury. It was life stitched together by hand and instinct. When storms howled across the fjords, men wrapped themselves in sheep's gift. Lanolin rich, water repellent, almost alive. Snow fell. Wool breathed and the body stayed warm. You can almost feel it, the coarse fabric scratching the wrist, the heavy weight pressing against the shoulders, the faint smell of smoke and sheep. Every fiber told a story of survival, of patience, of craft. Today we call it layering base mid-outer, a science of keeping warm. But they knew it long before the textbooks. They understood what modern gear mimics air is the true insulator. Keep it still and it keeps you alive. No heater, no electricity, just the body and wool working together. The Vikings slept in their layers, hunted in them, lived in them. Their warmth didn't come from firelight, but from what their hands could make. Sometimes the smartest fire is the one you wear, not primitive, ingenious. When the wood ran out, the Vikings turned to stone, because when winter bit too deep, when even the fjords froze solid fire alone was never enough, they learned to trap it, not in flame, but in rock. In the dim light of an Icelandic dusk, they built a pit outside stacked river stones and fed them fire. Hours later, those stones glowed red, pulsing like sleeping embers of the earth itself, and then they carried them home, wrapped in seal hide tucked beneath the floor, buried in boxes of fur and soil. You can almost hear it, the hiss as cold air meets molten heat, the soft crackle underfoot, the low hum of warmth spreading through frozen silence. No fire, no smoke, just stone remembering. Each rock became a silent sun, releasing its gift through the long night. It didn't burn, it breathed slowly. Faithfully, constantly, they slept around it. Children, mothers, warriors feeling the invisible fire at their backs. Frost outside, warmth inside, life in balance. They had built a hearth without flame, a fire that didn't burn wood, but time. Today, architects call it thermal mass. We design houses that store heat in concrete and clay. But a thousand years ago, they already knew the earth itself can hold fire. They didn't fear the cold, they learned to store warmth. And in that quiet glow beneath hides and breath and frost, a truth survived the centuries that warmth isn't always about burning. Sometimes, it's about remembering. Primitive, nor brilliant. In the endless dark of a northern winter, fire was rare, wood was gone, the nights were long, and still the Vikings found a way to bring light and warmth.
They made their fires swim in oil, in fat. From seals, whales, and fish, they carved survival from the sea. They melted the fat, poured it into stone bowls or clay cups, and set a single linen wick afloat. When lit, it burned slow, steady, golden. You can almost see it now, the yellow flame trembling in the dark, the shimmer on a child's cheek, the breath of smoke curling through the air, a room of shadows alive with a heartbeat of light. That little lamp did more than shine. It warmed hands. It thawed faces. It gave the night a pulse. No roaring fire. No chimney. Just one small flame holding back the Arctic. The secret wasn't the size of the fire, but the patience of its burn. Seal fat burned clean, long, and calm like time slowed down. A single bowl could last the whole night. It's heat enough to stop the frost from claiming the living. And so through centuries of storms, their homes glowed softly gold in a world of blue ice. Not bright, but alive. Today we build candle heaters for blackouts. They did it first a thousand years ago. Same principle, different world. A flame that feeds the dark. A warmth earned not given. Primitive, number beautiful. No blankets, no fire, just the endless cold pressing in from every side. Out there in the snowbound north warmth wasn't something you found, it was something you kept. The Vikings knew that, and when the wind clawed through their tents, when even the air seemed frozen solid, they turned to the oldest shelter of all their own breath. Archaeologists have uncovered fur-lined sleep sacks buried deep in Viking graves relics of survival. Made from seal hide or sheepskin soft on the inside, rough on the outstitch tight like a cocoon. A womb of warmth in a world of ice. They would crawl inside, tuck the flap over their heads, and let their breath do the rest. The trapped air between fur and flesh began to warm, minute by minute until it became its own small climate, a living bubble against the Arctic dark. You can almost feel it now, the damp fur brushing against the cheek, the pulse of breath in the silence, the wind outside screaming forgotten. No smoke, no sparks, just a human heart heating its own little universe. At 30 below, that cocoon could hold warmth until dawn. It wasn't firelight that saved them, it was patience, craft, and the quiet genius of understanding the body as its own hearth. Today, we call it the sleeping bag zippers nylon insulation foam, but beneath all that modern skin, the soul remains. A man lying alone in the snow, wrapped in what he made alive because of what he learned. They didn't fight the cold, they listened to it, they breathed with it. And that that is why they lived. No blanket, no heater, just breath and wisdom, primitive number timeless. The night fades, frost melts from the thatch, and their breath, once white as smoke, drifts away into the dawn. No fireplaces, no wires, just people, and the quiet brilliance that kept them alive. They warm themselves with earth, with straw, with each other. We warm ourselves with gas, with current, with screens that glow, but never comfort. They had less, but somehow, they were never cold inside. You can almost see it. A peasant stirring the embers with bare hands. A viking pressing against fur, still warm from his own breath. The world outside frozen solid, and yet within life, pulsing softly. Maybe warmth isn't something you build. Maybe it's something you understand. Because even without fire, they found a way to burn quietly, wisely, endlessly. Their fuel wasn't wood, it was wisdom. And as the morning light creeps across the frost, you realize the smartest people in history might have lived in the coldest places on earth. So next time you turn up the heat, remember them. Remember how warmth was once earned, not bought. And if you think the peasants and Vikings were masters of the cold, Wait until you see how monks in frozen stone monasteries stayed warm, without burning a single stick of wood.